Well, the Cleveland Browns went for it. A few months after the Kansas City Chiefs released our running back Kareem Hunt, Browns GM John Dorsey made the controversial decision to sign him. So much for him never playing football again, despite a video being released of him accosting a woman in a Cleveland hotel. The Browns' decision to sign Hunt following his release from the Chiefs is going to change the NFL in more ways than one. Not only are they adding a talented, yet troubled player to their team, but they might have shown an example for teams on how to handle cases like this in the future. Ray Rice never played in the NFL again following the TMZ video release of him attacking his fiance. And Greg Hardy didn't last long in pro football after allegedly beating his ex-girlfriend. Now we sit back and wait and see what will happen with Kareem Hunt. Will he make the most of his second chance? Or will the Browns look foolish for giving him an opportunity to play again? What's up all you Quantumaniacs? I'm Daquan Young and today we'll tell you exactly how the Browns signing Kareem Hunt is about to change the entire NFL. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and make sure you hit the bell and turn on our notifications and join the notification squad. For starters, we obviously can't deny this is a very controversial move by the Browns and it might not sit well among fans and pundits. We'll be touching more on that subject later in the video. Obviously, the Hunt signing is a game changer for the Browns on the field, given his talents as one of the game's best running backs. He joins an offense led by young and rising star quarterback Baker Mayfield and crafty wide receiver Jarvis Landry, and another stud running back in Nick Chubb, who finished with 996 rushing yards and eight touchdowns in his rookie season. Chubb, by the way, averaged a whopping 5.2 yards per carry. It's pretty impressive. Hunt won the NFL rushing title in his rookie season back in 2017. He finished with 1,327 rushing yards and eight touchdowns. But Hunt was also quite lethal as a pass catcher. He finished with 53 receptions for 455 yards and a trio of touchdown receptions. Hunt was a key reason why Alex Smith wound up having a career year in Kansas City, guiding the team to its second straight AFC West Division title. Prior to his suspension and subsequent release from the Chiefs, Hunt was having an excellent sophomore year. In 11 games, he had 824 rushing yards, 378 receiving yards, and 14 total touchdowns. Along with quarterback Patrick Mahomes and wide receiver Tyreek Hill, Hunt was an important piece in the nearly unstoppable offense. Few running backs are as well-rounded as Kareem Hunt, and in just over a season and a half, he's proven to be one of the biggest game breakers in the league. Now, there aren't too many offenses in the NFL that feature a great quarterback, elite wide receiver, and elite running back. Baker Mayfield is the real deal. Landry is a Pro Bowl wideout, and now the Browns have two top-tier running backs who are both capable of rushing for over 1,000 yards. And this is going to be key in Mayfield's development. The Browns know they have to surround him with all the talent they can. With Landry, Hunt, and Chubb in the fold, Mayfield won't be short of playmakers to get the ball to. Adding Hunt completely changes the offense, setting up opportunities for more screen plays, play action, and so on and so forth. This will help the Browns maximize Mayfield's production, plain and simple. The thing is, some teams just didn't want to add Hunt strictly for public relations sake. The Browns are taking the risk and simply looking at it this way. They have a young superstar just entering his prime who could be the difference maker in a championship quest. The Chiefs went with their morals and released Hunt amid a season full of Super Bowl aspirations. Damian Williams filled the void nicely, so the Chiefs won't be regretting releasing Hunt too much. For the Browns, GM John Dorsey is hell-bent on taking big risks like this in order to build a winning team. Many thought he was crazy for taking Mayfield with the first pick in 2018. Some wondered if it was ludicrous to give Landry a $75 million deal before he even played a snap for him. Those two gambles paid off so far, so we'll see how this one plays out with Hunt. Dorsey and the Browns understand the backlash they'll get for this, but if Hunt winds up contributing a plenty and the Browns make the playoffs for the first time since 2002, the organization won't regret it. It's up to the Browns and Hunt to show that this was the right move. The Hunt signing could also be a precedent for how NFL teams will start handling these situations now. As we see with Hunt, a player will always get a second chance if he's good enough. Look back to other examples of players who have been suspended and punished for committing similar acts. Ray Rice never played in the NFL again once TMZ released a video of him dragging his unconscious fiance out of an elevator after viciously striking her. Rice apologized and begged for another chance to play, but nobody ever came calling. For Joe Mixon, one of the top running back prospects in the 2017 draft, he could have been a first round pick, but Mixon had been charged for punching a woman in the face back in October of 2014, when he was just 18 years old. The woman had to go to the hospital and require surgery. 
Mixon had to perform community service, seek counseling, and apologize to the woman. But in Kareem's Hunt case, TMZ released a video of him accosting a woman in February 2018 at a Cleveland hotel. He was released from the team shortly after the video became public, and Hunt was placed on the commissioner's exempt list, where he remains as the league continues its investigation. Now, Ray Rice wasn't released by the Baltimore Ravens until the beginning of the 2014 season. TMZ had released the video in February, but the NFL didn't give him that two-game suspension until July. It took them that long to finally come up with their punishment. In Mixon's case, he didn't get any punishment from the NFL because he hadn't been drafted yet, and the Bengals simply focused on his talent. Mixon has become an important piece in the Cincinnati offense, and he's avoided the scrutiny from the public. Fair or not, the Bengals gave him that chance, and they're not regretting it. So this Hunt signing may set a precedent and an example for how other teams will handle cases like this. Hell, after the video of the Hunt incident was released, a front office source told this to Bleacher Report's Mike Freeman. Quote, he will be back because we can't help ourselves as a league. Show me one example where our league suffered from signing players like Hunt. That's why he'll play again. There are no repercussions for signing guys like him, but there are if you don't, end quote. Furthermore, an NFC executive asked Friedman if Kansas City has had any repercussions for drafting Tyreek Hill. There's your answer. Even NFL front offices can admit if a player gives them a chance to win, they'll keep him, even if he's put his hands on a woman inappropriately. Obviously, it depends on the organization. The Chiefs wasted no time releasing Hunt. For some clubs, passing on prospects like Mixon and Hill in the draft was a no-brainer. But for a team like Cleveland here, it doesn't matter. They'll deal with the cold reception from the fans and the media in the immediate future if it means wins in the long run. Look at what the Washington Redskins did with Reuben Foster. The San Francisco 49ers released Foster due to his off-field arrest, the final strike coming when he was arrested in November of 2018 for a domestic violence charge. The Redskins released this statement after they picked him up off of waivers. Washington and Cleveland might have set an example for how teams will handle these situations simply pick up a talented but troubled player, explain that the allegations weren't serious, and sign them anyway. It's as easy as that. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Now, here's the real problem with the Cleveland Browns opting to sign Kareem Hunt. Once again, the league has made it clear that there's a total disregard for holding players accountable and making a stance in a society where hitting women is never, ever acceptable. Take a look at a model organization like the New England Patriots. That team is fared just fine by moving on from any troubled players. Kareem Hunt is far from the only dynamic running back in the NFL. The Browns already have one in Nick Chubb, so is adding Hunt really necessary? It's sad when a league like the NFL shows just how much they don't care about the amount of lawbreakers they employ. Take a look at the MLB policy on domestic violence. If a player is arrested, he's immediately suspended, and in almost every case, the player receives a lengthy suspension rather than a tiny slap on the wrist like they do in the NFL. And in the majors, a lot of these suspensions are at least 50 games, often more. The Toronto Blue Jays wasted no time trading all-star closer Roberto Asuna, who was arrested for assaulting his girlfriend. He received a 75-game suspension, and the Houston Astros received plenty of heat when they opted to trade for him. Look at the NHL. Slava Voinov won't be playing there ever again. He was suspended in 2014 for viciously assaulting his partner, Marta. Even though he was a talented young defenseman, who won two Stanley Cups with the Los Angeles Kings. Teams don't care. They don't want a guy like that on the ice. But then there's the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell. He was widely criticized for barely punishing Ray Rice, despite the video evidence of his disgusting act. That is a disgusting act. Goodell has had so many chances to make it right, but it just hasn't happened. Remember when Tom Brady got a four game suspension for allegedly orchestrating a scheme to deflate footballs? While other professional sports leagues have developed zero tolerance policies for cases like this, the NFL continues to do nothing about it. They don't seem to care what criminal acts some of their players commit off the field. As long as he's talented and can help a team win a championship, they'll sign him. It's pretty sickening. The NFL and its teams continue to give these players free passes, and this doesn't belong in our society anymore. And the Hunt case once again shows that NFL teams prioritize winning over morals and doing the right thing. But why should we be surprised? The NFL has always been horrible at handling situations like this, and Hunt's case just sets a new precedent that should only further damage the league's reputation. So, there you have it, folks. It's gonna be quite the saga to follow in 2019 with the Browns trying to fix Hunt, who will in turn try to repair his image. What could go wrong? What are your thoughts on the Cleveland Browns signing Kareem Hunt? 
join us in the comment section below. I have I have a lot of thoughts on this one. I think he deserves a second chance. I think the NFL is a little bit lax on how they handle the situation, but I think there's a there's a lot of a tone deafness coming from Roger Goodell. But those are just my thoughts. Follow me on Twitter if you want more. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.